Assalamualaikum and good morning. My name is Mama Hafiz. Currently a second year student in major bachelor of science industrial chemistry at University of Technology Malaysia. I am one of the group members from SSC 2453 session 01 chemical kinetics and electrochemistry courses. Hi Natalie. So today we want to present to you guys about homogeneous catalysis from chapter 11. Okay. First thing first, I want to introduce to you guys who are my group members. My group consists of five members who are This is me, Muhammad Hafiz bin Norsham. Distribute 20% part of introduction, definition and closing. This is Yasmin Zulaika binti Sulkipri. Distribute 20% part of the advantages and disadvantages of catalyst. Muhammad Imran Hakim bin Abdul Rahim. Distribute 20% part of answering on TLO 1 questions. Nur Fatiha Benti Zulkifi. Distribute 20% part of answering on TLO 2 questions. Nur Sazwani Benti Abdul Razak. Distribute 20% part of the example of application and conclusion. We are from the group 3. Our presentation today is related to catalysis. But before that, let's we know the definition of catalysis. So, what it is? Actually, catalysis is an action by catalyst which increase the rate of chemical reaction without being consumed. They also provide an alternative pathway which has a lower activation energy compared to the one without catalyst. There are three types of catalyst. Firstly, heterogeneous. Catalyst and reactants are in the different phase and enzyme, which is biological molecules that acts as catalyst. But our main focus today is about homogeneous catalyst. Homogeneous, homo. Homo refer to the word same. So it means catalyst and reactants or substrates are in the same phase, such as gases and solutions. It is effective, but unfortunately, it is very difficult to remove because both are in the same phase. Okay? So, we have understood the definitions and the types of catalyst. But, what are its advantages and disadvantages? Okay, Yasmin, let's go! Hi, so I will talk about advantage and disadvantage of homogeneous catalysis. Okay, so for advantage, homogeneous catalysts are more active or selective compared to heterogeneous catalysis. Then, homogeneous catalysts are molecularly dispersed within the fluid, hence, more diffusion limitations are absent. Meanwhile, for the disadvantage, they are stable only in relatively mild conditions which limit their applicability. Not only that, separation at the end of the process is difficult and expensive. And next, comparison between homogeneous and heterogeneous catalysts. For homogeneous, Catalyst is in the same phase as reactants, but heterogeneous, they are in the different phase. For homogeneous, they are more difficult to filter catalyst from products, but heterogeneous, they are easy to filter. For homogeneous, they are fast reaction and highly selective, but heterogeneous, they are slow reaction and poor selective. Lastly, Homogeneous reaction mechanism is better studied and well understood, but for heterogeneous, the reaction mechanism is difficult to study. Next, I will pass to Imran. Hello. Okay, for the next part, we're going to answer some questions regarding homogeneous catalyst. For the first question, the questions below are proposed mechanism for the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Okay, the first question, what is the function of Br- or bromide? in this reaction and state the type. The function of bromide is it acts as a catalyst. In this reaction, bromide acts as a catalyst that speed up the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Bromide is used in the beginning of the reaction and then reproduced on the right side of the equation. In other words, bromide is chemically unchanged at the end of the reaction. And the type is homogeneous catalyst. Which brings us to our next question. What is meant by homogeneous catalyst? Homogeneous catalyst is catalyst that is in the same phase as the reactant. As you can see, the reactant hydrogen peroxide is in aqueous state. Bromide also in aqueous state. Therefore, we can say that the bromide is a homogeneous catalyst. Next, draw the expected surface energy potential for both reaction with and without catalyst. So here are the graph. As you can see, 
the catalyst reaction involves two successful steps, each of which has a lower activation energy than the uncatalyzed reaction. Okay, next question. Question two. The oxidation of sulfur dioxide to sulfur dioxide is catalyzed by nitrogen dioxide. The reaction proceeds as follows. So the, there is two elementary reaction. So first question is why is nitrogen dioxide is considered as homogeneous catalysis? This is because both which is nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide is, are in the same phase which is both are gases. Okay, the next question, write the overall relation. After we cancel all intermediate species, we got the overall relation which is 2 sulfur dioxide react with oxygen produce 2 sulfur dioxide. Okay, then write the rate law of each elementary reaction given K1 and K2 as the rate concern. So, R equal to K1 times concentration of NO2 times concentration of SO2. And second one is R equal to K2 times concentration of NO squared times concentration of O2. Okay, last question is write the overall rate law expression. By using rate limiting step approximation, we know that we use the slow step, right? So R equal to K2 times NO squared times O2. We don't know the concentration of NO because it is intermediate species. We can calculate the concentration. So we use differential equation and get the equation of NO squared and substitute back to the rate law expression that we use. So the final answer is R equal to K1 times concentration of NO2 times concentration of SO2. That's all from me for my explanation part. So pass it to me. Hi guys, with me we will talk about the example of industrial reaction using homogeneous catalyst. Homogeneous catalysts are less frequently used in industry compared to heterogeneous catalysts as at the end of the completion of the reaction, they have to be separated from the product. And that process can be very, very expensive. However, there are several important industrial processes that involve homogeneous catalysts, often using an acid or base. So as you can see here, these are the examples of industrial processes using homogeneous catalysts. First, we have the manufacture of ethane one to dibol using sulfuric acid, isoctane using hydrogen fluoride, phenol and propanol using sulfuric acid, and bisphenol A also using sulfuric acid. In the mechanism for this reaction, a hydrogen ion is ended at the start and lost at the end. The hydrogen ion function as a catalyst. Two other examples are constant with the production of 2 to trimethyl pentane from 2 methyl propane, again using an acid as the catalyst. One uses 2 methyl propane, as you can see, and which yield the atom directly. The other uses only 2 methyl propane. This is the mechanism for the formation of ethane 1 to dial from epoxy ethane. The mechanism of the reaction also involves the addition of hydrogen ion to the to a red thing. As you can see here, this is, uh, in this figure, this is a part of mechanism for the formation of 2,4,4,3,methyl-2-pentane from 2-methyl-propyl. The alkene is then hydrogenated using nickel as the catalyst to form 2,2,3,methyl-pentane, which is isoobtain. Isoobtain is often added to petrol to enhance its anti knock properties. Now that methyl t butyl ether and TBE is being phased out. Alright, so that's all from us from group 3. I hope you guys can understand about homogeneous catalyst. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video to others. See you again. Thank you. 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 Thank you.